All right, guys, we have the 14th hard request on the current list up today. Jerry Lee Lewis, Dennis Quaid, Crazy Arms. Look it up on YouTube. Take a listen. That's what we're doing today. Let's see if I can play it. I'm Sean Cheek and welcome to my easy piano lessons. Have a little poison ivy on my face if you can see that. My uh, great Pyrenees dog who guards our entire farm, our chickens and everything, uh, she gets poison ivy on her sometimes and then you know I give her a hug, tell her a good job and sometimes I get it on my face. <laughs> so I'm dealing with that if you if I look like Quasimodo. I did look like Quasimodo a couple of days ago but anyway we're going to do the part one lesson here. All of the lessons for this will be on my website, webpianoteacher.com. Works on all your mobile devices. Oh, laptops, desktop, computer, whatever you want to watch on. And uh, we are going to, of course, do the piano solo in the middle. I'm going to show you how to play some left hand with it as well. Because, you know, when you're playing with a band, you play differently than when you're playing piano solo. And sometimes you need a little extra when you're doing a piano solo just to kind of carry on that band feel. So uh, we're going to the left hand but now Jerry Lee Lewis of course all the glissandos uh, that's kind of his thing <laughs> and I when I do a glissando I like to use my uh, the flesh part of my fingers if I go down most of the time his glissandos are down sometimes they go up uh, and for those I like to use, you know, you, you can use the backs of your nails, but the thing is it can really rub your hand raw and give you some sores and boo-boos on your fingers. If you do this a hundred times in a practice session and you don't realize that you're rubbing the skin off till you're done, you're like, oh, my hand really hurts. <laughs> so really watch that. Uh, take it easy on the glissandos, especially if you're on a, a real piano or an older piano. They got rough edges and they will actually make you start to bleed. So watch those glissandos. When we're going down though, I like to use the flesh part of my finger instead of the thumbnail because that will rake the skin off as well. So just just your, your fingers. It'll even rake, uh, take the skin off of these, but a lot less, um, you know, less likely. So we start to... Now, first thing is do not ruin this with the pedal. Don't hold the pedal down. A lot of people, when they first discover the pedal, they just think they're going to hold it down the whole time. And uh, really, learning when not to use it is really the, the secret to it. G, B, 1 and 3 in the right hand. And then you play that again. Then you go to A, C, pop, ba, da, and then da, da. Then we have A, C again with 1, 3 to A sharp, C sharp, 2 and 4. So da, da. If you're not familiar with my notation, if I have a dash, that means you hold that note out a little bit longer. And if I have a curved line, those notes tend to be a little faster. And then when we get to the last one, B, D, we have a little, I have a little uh, tremolo marking. And then we'll just tremolo back and forth between B and D. Here's the, the secret on a tremolo. It's not how fast you do it, but how even. You don't want holes in the tremolo. That's quite fast enough. It's kind of a, a, a lazy sounding song and you don't want to do it too fast anyway. All right, and always have to speak to beginners. If you're looking at this and going, whoa, you're going too fast, slow down, dude. Uh, talking too fast, you're going too fast. Uh, if you are a beginner, what are you doing here? <laughs> this is too hard. You need beginner lessons. I do have 79 beginner lessons on my website to get you ready to play something like this. But if this is not in your league, then you need to do something that's in your league or you're going to get frustrated and quit and you won't play anything. So make sure that you're within your wheelhouse, uh, whatever you're learning. 
uh, when, once we start the left hand. Um, the left hand doesn't play much on this because you don't want to get in the way of the bass player. Okay, you don't want to, you know, stuff like that. When the bass player's doing his thing, it'll get muddy and messy. So just octaves. So, and I would do something like this. Just kind of a pinky thumb thing. the bass guitar uh, chord there when I do it but uh, since we don't have a band with us we don't have a bass guitar player this kind of works for me something like that okay so that's what I'm gonna do on those bass notes G D once we start so have a, uh, a sharp, C sharp again, B, D, C, E, so one, two, three, and he actually starts the tremolo before the count one there, then we do the tremolo again on B and D, now we go down, and we have B flat, D flat, and you may wonder, well, why? Did you call it A sharp, C sharp, and now you're calling it B flat, D flat? Same notes, right? <clears throat> because of the way it's resolving, it's going down. When the musical line is going downward, when it's descending, we'll use flats for that, because flats go lower anyway. If we're ascending, we're going to tend to use sharps. It just, it just depend on, depends on where it's going to resolve. It's resolving down. So that's why we use flats there. Okay, so we actually, some people go, well, notes are better to read, you know, musical notation, but, you know, this is, uh, you know, barbaric. <laughs> Almost people look down on it. But actually, we talk about theory and chord structure and chord progression uh, a lot more in this type of a lesson than someone would with musical notation, I think. So in some ways, we're better off. A, C at the end, and then G, B. The left hand's following that bass guitar. Okay? You can do it really low, but I think it's better here. Then we have our gliss. So one, two. Da -da 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 -da. Right up there, DG with three and five. E flat G, D e flat C, A sharp, B. Notice that fifth finger has the G on the top. A lot of blues is like a. Just to kind of do bluesing it up on the bottom here while you have that high note. You'll find there's not that many, you know, different uh, common licks that everyone uses. You just kind of vary it up, vary it uh, from time to time, and you have all you need. Uh, and then when you get to that last measure up there, I'm going to put this all together in a minute. Hang on. And then right, left, B, G to left handy. Right, here we go, beginning. One, two, three. One, two, a two. Da, da, da. All right, I did it kind of slow. Let's do it again. This part when the singing comes in, um, I'll make this an extended part one again, like I did the last thing. Um, so <laughs> I just feel like I'm in the groove, so I'm gonna keep going here instead of cutting it off and making this rest of this the part two. We'll go ahead and make it an extended part one. Um, right here, he does two, he either does this left, right, left, right, left. Is this da, 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 da. so I put the chord and you can choose how you're gonna do it they really turn the piano down on these parts uh, they just do and uh, the other members of the band are heard the bass guitar and the, 
the, the electric guitar player is really important in this. In fact, the electric guitar player has just as many or more licks that are important to this song as the piano does. Um, so when you have that, you don't want the piano and the guitar fighting, you know, so the piano kind of backs off. Uh, but you have to know what to play, right? And I'm listening, and I don't really hear a lot of piano sometimes. So we'll just kind of take bits and pieces when I do hear it and copy that and insert that anywhere we don't hear a piano. So now... there for you. G, B, D on the right. Left hand goes G, D, G, A, B, C. I'm following the bass guitar. Do I hear the piano do that? No, I do not. But the, the bass guitar part is so integral, integral to the sound of this that I've got to put it in there. All right, if I play just what Jerry Lee plays, I'll, I won't really capture the sound that I'm looking for. All right, as a solo pianist. And that's what a lot of people are missing on their arrangements is they're trying to get just what the piano does in that song, but then, then you miss everything else around it. So we want to include as much as we can. Uh, so here we go to a G7. We were doing GBD. Now we're doing G7. So we're going to add an F. That sets itself for the C chord. We do a G7, it, it resolves to C. It, it, it just pulls us to C when we do a G7. So one, two. chord C in the left right hand has G C E. Now right here you see A B and you go where, what's the chord there? Really it doesn't change. It's still a G7. The A B are just called what we call passing tones. They're not really a chord, they're just a passing tone to get us to C. G D G A B C so Right there, the guitar, electric guitar, does this kind of cool thing. So I thought I'd show you that. G, B, flat, E. And he does that two times. One, two. You can do that or not do it. The piano does not do it. You can do it higher, you can do it lower. All right. But the chord is G. I do hear the piano play right there. So right here, we're back to G. One, two. sharp D to be da -da -da -da. it's a very common blues country kind of thing <coughs> so we keep holding the D with our fifth finger and do the A sharp B on the bottom of it one two three the four the one the two the three the four so I do hear the piano here one of the rare times I hear the piano in the accompaniment G G B G B G D F sharp A bass guitar, G, G, F sharp, E, D. Notice I'm not doing octaves because I don't want it to be too heavy. Okay? So let's get that far <coughs> where the singing comes in, where this is an extended part one, isn't it? And go, da da Sharp A left hand on D. One, two. Right, that's very Jerry Lee Lewis, right? D, F sharp with the two, E to C, tremolo. Not fast though, guys. You'll actually ruin it if you do it too fast. That ruins it. You want that kind of, you know, saloon bar feel. Okay. E, C, not too fast. And then there's an A there in the left hand, D, A, D, B, D, D flat, C, D, C, G. Now why D flat? Why not C sharp? Because we're resolving downward. D, C, G, G, then we start a new phrase. So one, two, uh, Once we start here, G, G chord, you should know that lick from up here. Da -da -da -da. I just 
just put a GBD in parentheses because that's the chord. Don't hear the piano there, but uh, I need something to play there for me, so I'm just going to stay on the G chord. Oh, wait, wait. No. Oops. Ha! I uh, waited too long to refresh my iPad so it went dark. So, da -da -da. I'm sorry. Da -da -da. Watch the bass line here, G, G, E, D, C. That's the bass guitar. So for a whole measure there, we're just on G, C, E, G, left hand on a C. And then, so there's a little piano lick there. Very common blues lick, G. And then we'll do A sharp to B, right, uh, pinky on the D. And Jerry Lee really sticks with the major blues. not too much the minor blues and E and I, in fact I've got a lot of blues lessons on my website like 19 of them uh, piano blues is the title you want to really get into blues stuff finger on E G B D so one all right um, so let's go from where the singing starts I think Jerry Lee starts da -da 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 -da. we'll go slow Take it easy on those glisses. Leave them out sometimes just so that you don't make your hand really raw there. Because you can, the point is that it can be happening and you're having so much fun playing, you don't realize your skin's gone. <laughs> just, just telling you that from experience. Because then you get a, if you do it really bad, you get a scab and then you can't play for a while. Um, and that's no fun. There's your very extended part one <clears throat> there. And we do finish it on webpianoteacher.com, including the piano solo in the middle. That's very cool. And not too hard, okay? It's not too difficult. So I'll hold your hand all the way through it and take you through. A lot of fun, guys. Talk to you later.